Welcome to a brand new Star Wars World of Public video, and this is going to be a pretty short one, but we're just going to be going through some of the new planets and locations we get to uh, go ahead and explore in the Knights of the Eternal Throne expansion. Now, there are going to be some minor spoilers in here, basically just you're going to learn about the planets that you get to travel to and maybe a little bit about them, but there's going to be no major story spoilers. But once again, if you want to just go through Knights of the Eternal Throne completely fresh and with no prior information, I do suggest you don't watch this video. It is going to contain minor spoilers. Alright, so looking at the two new planets that we're going to be getting, and it's, uh, it's pretty common knowledge that with any new expansion, we do get to travel to new planets. So the two new planets for this one are Iokath and Nathema. Now starting off with Nathema, because a lot of you guys are probably already familiar with it, I'm not sure whether it's pronounced Nathema or Nathema, but whatever, that planet is the birthplace of Vitiate, who is the immortal Sith Emperor. He was born there, that's a planet basically that he conquered and performed his ritual on, meaning it is a wasteland. It's a wasteland with that's deprived of any force energy or anything but as we saw in the betrayed trailer and as a lot of people have probably correctly speculated we are going to be able to travel to this planet and that is the planet where Valen was taken to when she was just a young child and the Nathema zealots and those other kind of creepy looking people that seem to follow Valkorion and worship him those guys are staying there uh, it is also has been data mined that the area we get to travel to is not necessarily the planet itself, but a Nathema sanitarium. That's where a lot of the story stuff is going to be going on. And so it does seem to be just kind of this isolated area on the planet where you're going to ha probably have some quests or you're going to have to go find something. Alright, so that's the Nathema planet. The second major planet we get that's new is Iokath. Now, Iokath, there's not much information about it online. It doesn't seem to actually exist. It seems to be a planet that they just created for Knights of the Eternal Throne to fit in with the whole Zakul universe and everything. But basically what the planet is, is it's a droid planet. So it's a planet where droids run everything, it's rampant with droids, and that's kind of the alien species. In the same way like Ryloth has the Twi'leks, that's basically where they live, that's their home planet. This seems to be a home planet for droids. And you are going to go there and learn a lot about uh, the origins of numerous droids, including the Gemini series and all that kind of stuff. And so that's obviously going to be very important for the story. It is there for two chapters. You're going to be on this planet for chapter 4 and chapter 5. And so it is going to be something major. While Nathema, for example, is just one planet. You just get to go there for chapter 7. Uh, for, and so those are the two new planets. Once again, not much information. And I can't give you any more information without doing some major story spoilers, which I do know. But... Basically, I just wanted to throw it out there that those are the two planets we're traveling to and in that capacity. Uh, some of the other really cool locations we get to travel to. In Chapter 9, there's a location we travel to that's called the Zakul Spire. And all the images I have up on the screen here are images of the planets I'm talking about. And the second one is Valen's Penthouse on Zakul. So that is going to kind of act as its separate own little location. It looks very extravagant and luxurious. It's going to be really interesting to travel there and see what you know what's going on there and what we're going to have to do. But uh, But those are kind of new locations. Now, in terms of old locations, we are going to be able to travel to old locations that have been revamped. And this is normally for the uprisings. And so I think it's important to include this as well. We are going to be traveling to old locations that you're very familiar with. For example, Droman Kass. So we're going to be traveling to Hoth, Denova, a, a place called Port Nowhere. I'm not sure whether that's new, uh, but the image, it looks like it's maybe Narshada or maybe it's a new area. But these are places that we're very familiar with. We've done a whole bunch of quests on them, but they have been revamped and they have been changed a little bit in order to accommodate the Knights of the Eternal Throne setting because uh, remember a lot of these planets especially capitals like Droman Kass and Coruscant have been bombarded they were attacked by the Eternal Empire so there has to be some remnants of that where there's a lot of destruction places are being ha having to become re rebuilt and all that stuff and so that's what I mean by these locations have been revamped they've been changed so that when you're traveling there you're not with all those newbies who are playing on Droman Kass for the first time you're actually playing on kind of a different planet that has been modified to fit in with the story so those are also going to be new, new locations that you travel to. And finally, we're also going to be traveling to old planets during the Knights of the Eternal Throne story. Uh, as I mentioned, uprisings are going to occur on a lot of these planets that have been revamped. But also, for your story, for example, you're going to be traveling to Voss and to Droman Cass. And these are both planets that, as I've said, we're familiar with, but they are going to be changed. On Voss, there's a huge war that's occurring, and I assume that this is going to be a totally new planet that we travel to, not the original Voss. Like, we're not going to travel to the original Voss and then enter an instance or something. Rather, this is going to be an entirely new planet. The same thing with Droman Cass. And so it's important to note that those are kind of going to be new locations as well. Anyways, those are some of the really cool new stuff that we're getting with Knights of the Eternal Throne. I hope you guys are excited for it. I definitely am to see these planets, which I really love. I mean, I have so much nostalgia associated with Droman Cass. And, you know, traveling there and doing my first missions as a Sith warrior and a bounty hunter. 
So it's going to be really nice to go travel back there with my Sith Warrior and see how it has changed. And basically, perhaps we're going to get some new quests and stuff. And so this last little bit, guys, if you just wanted the information, this is probably the end of the video for you. But my last little bit is just going to be my opinions. I'm going to ramble on a little bit about it. Because there is one thing I wanted to discuss. And I really hope that this is going to come with Knights of the Eternal Throne. But I kind of doubt it as well. Uh, it's that I actually want to travel and explore planets and that's one of the big things about an MMO is being, is that ability to go on a planet and just, you know, really envelop yourself in the environment, do various side quests, not just do one story. And with what we saw in um, Knights of the Fallen Empire was, yeah, sure, we got new planets that, like, the cool and stuff, but we couldn't explore it. We couldn't, like, go around and do side quests and stuff. It was just, yeah, we had our mission, we went to Zakul, we did our story, and we left. And with a lot of places in Zakul, it was kind of like Skyforge. The, I don't know if you guys have played Skyforge. I've watched some gameplay on it. It's basically just like a tunnel. Like, you, you get dropped in a place, it's, you, it's like a narrow tunnel that you just travel down, you kill your mobs, and you can't really go and explore on the sides. You're kind of just directed down one way. I think you guys get what I'm, what I'm saying. And that's not my idea of getting a new planet. Like, for example, with Nathema, unfortunately, it seems as though we're just going to be thrown on the planet. You're going to have your quest. It's going to be like that tunnel thing where you're just running down a path that's already been chosen for you and you have to go kill mobs and do the story. Now, that's not really a new planet. A new planet is something more like you get dropped in a planet. Sure, you have your story quest, but you also have side quests. You also have places you can go and explore. You have data crons to go find on that planet, stuff like that. Uh, you know, that's a real new planet. And I'm thinking back to Zyost, for example, with the rise of the Emperor expansion. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't even playing Swotar when that happened. Uh, but uh, so I wasn't really involved in the hype or anything. And I even haven't done the story thus far. But I do know that when that expansion came out, we got a new planet, Zyost. And on that planet, people could go and do side quests and explore the planet. And it looked really cool. And that's what I'm talking about. That's a real, um, that's a real new planet with a new expansion. These new planets that we're getting don't seem to be actual new locations to go and explore like we should be able to do in an MMO. They seem to just be kind of those planets where it's like, yeah, we're adding it, but you just have one set story and you can't really do anything. So as I mentioned, I do hope that we're going to be able to have those features, or I do hope that with new, lo new planets that we get in the future, we're actually going to be able to do things like explore it. But... Uh, but yeah, that kind of ends my little rambling. I just wanted to do a quick rant about that because, um, yeah, I mean, I, I do think it's a good idea for MMOs to give us things to explore. And the more they start making it like a single player game, like we play like The Force Unleashed or something where, yeah, you get dropped on a planet, but yeah, we expect it to be a single player game. But this is an MMO. We all signed up and we're all paying 20 bucks a month or 15 bucks a month to play an MMO and to be able to have that ability to go and travel. That's the whole fun of playing an MMO, not, uh, not being given just a direct path we have to follow. Uh, one other good example is Manan, for example. A lovely planet, awesome. I know this huge group of people that want a stronghold there and stuff. And it is a beautiful planet. It's all water and everything. But there's absolutely nothing to do on it. It's, it's not a real new planet. It's just there's absolutely nothing to do. You know, Rishi was a new planet. We got to get go there and do side quests and all that stuff. But um, And Daily's on there too. And um, yeah, so anyways, that ends my rant. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys found it informative. I will see you in the next one.